Welcome back to my Get Google Ready teaching series for 2024. And in this lesson, I'm gonna be taking you through the very, very important topic of completing your keyword research for your Google Ads campaigns. Now, keyword research is the process of where we go through and do a search to find the best keywords that we wanna target for our Google Ads campaigns. And this is also the time where you look to go through and break out your keyword themes or your different products or services into different campaigns and ad group structures. Now, if you've been involved with Google Ads for more than two years, you will know that over the past two years, Google has been rolling out some significant changes and one of the most significant changes is the way that Google Ads has changed its match types. So historically in Google Ads, and there was three main different types of keyword match types that you could use, being your exact match, your phrase match, and your broad match. Now those three types of keyword matches still operate, but they operate very, very different. And the reason for that is because Google now assigns what it calls a meaning to the keyword phrase rather than the keywords in that phrase. So let's now go look at Google's resource and then we'll go through and explain this because it is actually quite different to what Google explains. So we're here on the Google Ads help page and you can see here that Google has still got the three different keyword match types being for broad, phrase and exact. And the example it gives is that if someone was to complete the search for lawn mowing service. Now with the broad match, it would be a very broad or comprehensive matching they're saying. And what this does is this is any keyword phrases that relate to your search keyword. So they've even got their things like lawn aeration prices. Whereas phrase match will only trigger your ads for searches that include the meaning of your keyword. So it's got things like lawn mowing service near me, hire company to mow lawn, versus exact match is limited to things like lawn mowing service or grass cutting service. The only thing that I would say with this is that in real world experience of managing multiple Google Ads campaigns, I can say that this is a lot broader and I would even say that things like lawn aeration prices would appear in exact match phrase targeting. And generally the way that I set up my campaigns and ad groups now, and I'll be taking you through an exact example of this is that I'm mainly using broad match and exact match. The reason for that is because I just don't see much use or need for phrase match at the moment. That's really because the way that it works because everything is a lot broader, it's very much the broad and exact match that we're using. So that's Google's exact explanation. But as I go through the process of completing my keyword research and showing how that's happened, this will start to make more sense about why I set up the campaigns that way that I do. Now with this new keyword match type operating, with Google. So with your keywords that you're gonna be selecting to target within your Google Ads campaigns, the big thing that I wanna stress is that Google is now targeting the meaning of those keywords as opposed to the keywords which are in those phrases. So what I do wanna stress is that the biggest change that I've made and the best way that I've seen success with the operation of this new match types from Google Ads is that especially when it comes to broad match keywords, is that you wanna be using keyword phrases that have more keywords in it, so a longer tail keyword. So for example, instead of targeting something like Seminyak Villas, I'm now targeting things like one bedroom Seminyak holiday pool villas. And the reason for that is because Google is gonna be a lot more broader and the targeting, you wanna give Google more words in the initial keyword so that it's got more context for what the exact meaning is for the type of keywords you wanna target. So I'm even finding in our testing that a longer tail broad match keyword is gonna be more targeted than a shorter tail exact match keyword. So for example, that example I gave, if you had a broad match keyword of book a one bedroom Seminyak holiday villa, that would perform better and attract more targeted keywords as opposed to an exact match of one bedroom Seminyak pool villas. Because you've added in the extra context of that you want it to be a holiday term, you want it to be a holiday booking, 
is that you want it to be a holiday villa and you're looking at making that booking. So what I wanna do right now is I wanna take you into a step-by-step -step screen share so I can show you the process of how to go from completing your keyword research into putting it into different campaigns and ad group structures. So let's jump into that screen share right now. Now, one thing I do wanna point out is that before I even go into Google Ads, I start my keyword process by opening up a Google Sheet and then I just jot down the actual search terms that I would use if I want to complete a search for my product. Now, I'm gonna be building this around our villa resort, which has one and two bedroom villas. And what I've got through here is I've got some keyword ideas just around one bedroom Seminyak villas, two bedroom Seminyak villas, and also book a luxury Seminyak holiday villa. And the process that I'm gonna be taking you through is how to start with these keyword ideas and then break it into this campaign and ad group structure. So the first thing you do is, as I say, I would just write down some different keywords. Just start with about anywhere between five to 10 different keyword ideas. I copy those and then I come into Google Ads and when you're in Google Ads, you wanna be going over to Tools and you wanna be going into Planning and we wanna to go to our Keyword Planner. Now, if you already switched over to the new Google Ads dashboard, you wanna be going into Tools and then into Planning and then into Keyword Planner again. But it doesn't matter whether you're using the new or the old dashboard, because once you get into Keyword Planner, the steps are gonna be the same. And if you do get lost, just go into the search bar and type in Keyword Planner and that will take you straight into the Keyword Planner. And when we're in there, we wanna go into Discover New Keywords. You will see an option to organize the keywords into ad groups. I still prefer to do this manually. And the reason for that is because I just find the usability easier still using Google Sheets because you can export this plan into a Google Sheet. So what I do is I go Discover New Keywords. I then just go through and paste in those keywords that I've got from my initial keyword sheet. You can also add in your website, but I do find that that just brings in too many ideas. So I just go in from here and go get results. And what this is now doing is it's giving us a couple of things. Is obviously you can see the keywords you provided. It's giving us the, the data here, and then it breaks out into some different keyword ideas. Now what you can also do as well is that it's got some other brands in here, and we're saying that we don't want to include those brands. So you can see through here, it's now showing me 31 of 34 different keyword ideas. So what you wanna be looking at through here as well is that you can see the average monthly searches and this is just letting you know a bit of a traffic volume of whether this is increasing or decreasing. And ideally what we wanna be looking for is we wanna kinda of try and find that sweet spot where we're seeing some keywords that have a lower competition, so either low or medium. I'll just increase the rows through here. So you can see some here have high, but we're gonna be going in for these ones that have low or medium and that we're happy with the bids. Now, what you do need to understand with this low range, the top of bid low range, that would be positions three and four and the top of page would be position one. So that's the reason for why that's a difference between 80 cents through to nearly $3 for the same keyword. So what we'd be looking at through here is, I just go through and select the keywords. These are the ones that we've added. And then what I also wanna be doing is I wanna be going through and finding any others that have that metric. But remembering as well is that I don't wanna to go to things that are too broad. So if you were to focus this down by average monthly searches, you will see things like, you know, two bedroom, Villa Bali Seminyak. I'm gonna keep that out. Just the reason being is because there is a bit of a market for long-term rentals and we're looking for holiday rentals. So what you wanna do is you just wanna be going through and just seeing if there's anything extra that works for you and your business. And essentially even things that you wanna go through and do some tests for. Now, in the case you can see here, this is one of the ones that we included, book a luxury Seminyak holiday villa, and you can see that it doesn't have any search data, but the benefit of setting that as a broad match is because it can be a bit of a, what I call, exploratory keyword theme for you. So you can see once we've set up the campaign, what Google is targeting in the search terms, and if there's anything relevant, we can then go through and add that into our keywords. So once I've got this through here, we wanna go through and we wanna add keywords to create the plan. And then when you see the keyword plan from here, you've got all of our keywords in through here. And I want you to go up here and you can go through and you can download this into a Google Sheet. You can also do it into a CSV file. When you download it into a Google Sheet, because what we wanna do then is if we download it into a Google Sheet and we can just go keywords, 
And then when you go and open up that sheet, it brings all the data in through here. And what I do is I go through a process basically just cleaning this out. So I remove the columns that we don't need there anymore. And then what we do from there is that you can see from here, I've broken this into three different campaigns. So one bedroom villas, two bedroom villas, and then a villa general, but each campaign only has one ad group in it. And that's because the you know one bedroom villa and also the spelling of one, it would target, and also even Seminyak and Bali would target the same keywords. So that's why we only need the one ad group. But the reason for I've broken this out is because with our one bedroom villas and our two bedroom villas, they're two very different markets because obviously we're looking at couple travelers versus family travelers. So that's why I wanted to separate that out. And then with the Villa General, we wanted to give this one a test because it does have some good search volumes in here, but it could also open the door into some different hotel and related searches. So that's why I wanted to have it in a separate campaign so I can control the budget spending. So that's essentially what you wanna be doing with the keyword research. You wanna be taking it from this list where you're writing down your initial ideas. You then go into your Google Ads Keyword Planner to see what data Google is giving you, and then you go through and organize it into your different campaigns and ad groups. Now, one thing that I will say here as well, especially with this data around the cost of the keywords, it is important to note that that is what's been happening previously. So this isn't a forward prediction. This is what's been happening previously. and. It does also just use some automated metrics. So your real life campaign performance could be very different depending on your own ad quality scores, your, you know, the quality of your ads, the quality of your landing pages. So very much just use this as an initial guide. So that's the simple process that I use to complete my Google Ads keyword research. Now, if you have had experience with Google Ads, you might notice that that is a very, very short keyword list because historically, you know, you would have different campaigns that would have up to you know 15 20 different ad groups and you would have ad groups that would only have one keyword in it but the reason for why i don't use that strategy anymore is because remember google is now being a lot more broad with its keyword matching and then as well as as we've seen as i spoke about if you watch the first video in this series about how it is quite common in google ads that if you have a lot of different ad groups in your campaign that google will just focus the spending on two or three different ad groups. So what we're looking at now is because Google is a lot broader and it's matching, we need to have our ad groups to be a lot broader. So as long as it's still on the same meaning, so you can see with that structure that I showed you, we had three really clear defined keyword themes of the one bedroom Villa Seminyak, two bedroom Villa Seminyak, and then like a, just a general Seminyak Villa accommodation campaign that we're targeting. Now, the last thing that I wanna stress is that even though I would only start with those three keyword phrases per ad group, what I do look at doing over the first one to two months of the campaign is that when we go through and complete our search term audits, we're going through and adding in extra exact match keywords. And we're adding in those exact match keywords based on two core factors. One, they're converting, so they're giving you conversions, you're adding them in. And then two, if they're highly, highly relevant and you want them to convert. So even though we've only started with three or four broad match keywords in each ad group, we're gonna be adding in exact match keywords. And after about two or three months, you'll find that my ad groups have only two broad match keywords, and then I've got a collection of anywhere between 20 to 40 different exact match keywords. And that's the strategy that I'm finding is working the best right now with Google Ads. And to help you with that process, I've created my Google Ads optimization checklist. And this is the checklist which lets you know all of the different optimization actions that you need to complete, like those keyword search term audits. And if you'd like to get access to that, all you need to do is to follow that link in the description below, and you can get free access to my Google Ads optimization checklists. So thank you for joining me. And as I said, this video is part of my Get Google Ready playlist. And this is the playlist which is gonna take you through everything you need to know to not only set up, but correctly optimize all the different types of Google Ads campaigns that you will be needing in 2024. And if you wanna make sure that you don't miss any of these videos, you don't only need to subscribe to my channel, but it'd also be great if you turn on that notification bar so that you never miss out when I release a new video in this series. Once again, thank you for joining me and I look forward to seeing you next time. See ya.